Welcome to Vital Records, the monthly genealogy tip series. My name is Valerie and I'm a library associate at the Hamilton Mill Branch of the Gwinnett County Public Library. I'm an experienced genealogist excited to explore genealogy resources with you today. Hello and happy October. This month I want to talk about a resource that might be considered creepy by some, but which genealogists recognize as an invaluable resource. Cemeteries. I'm going to talk about why cemeteries are important to genealogy research, how to find resources on cemeteries, and tips for visiting a cemetery. Let's get started. So, how can cemeteries be helpful in genealogy research? Firstly, they can provide a lot of standard vital records information, such as names and dates, possibly locations where your ancestors were born and died, and maybe even prove relationships. Sometimes a headstone will say, wife of or child of. You might even see some old fashioned terms that we no longer use. If a woman is recorded as a consort, that means that she was a wife who died before her husband. On the other hand, a woman who's listed as a relict is a wife who died after her husband. Aside from explicitly stating information, there's a lot of family history that can be inferred from cemeteries or that can lead to new avenues of research. For example, People who are buried in the same plot are likely close family members. People buried in adjacent plots might also be family. Try researching those names to find the connections. Occupations and associations might be indicated on a headstone, such as images with the tools of their trade, such as an anvil for a blacksmith. Similarly, military service is often indicated on a headstone. If you didn't know that they served in the military, now you know to go look for those service records. Financial status can also be determined by looking at a headstone. Big elaborate memorials indicate wealth, while a small handmade marker might indicate that they could not afford a professionally made stone. Next, let's talk about locating resources for conducting cemetery research. Depending on where your ancestor lived and their financial situation, locating their burial location might be easier or more difficult, especially in the 1800s and prior. I do want to focus on those older burials, which might be more difficult to locate and for which the experience of your ancestors may have had more influence. A wealthy person in an urban area likely had their choice of burial locations in a large, well cared for cemetery and could purchase a big headstone that would stand against the weather. They also likely had an obituary or other record recording their burial. A landowner in a rural area was more likely to be buried on their own land, and their once well marked family cemetery now may be abandoned in a new growth forest in the middle of a farmer's field or it could even be in someone's backyard. There might not be a record of this burial, which was done in the how it's always been done way. Why would you need to record the information if it's the way it's always done? Historic black cemeteries were often built in undesirable places and were less elaborate with more handmade and temporary markers. These cemeteries have also been more vulnerable to development and destruction, making locating them more difficult and even impossible. Records for these cemeteries are also less likely to have been created. That said, how do you find out where your ancestors are buried if you don't already know? Start with records such as death certificates and obituaries. You want these for your records anyway, but they can definitely help you find out cemetery information. Also, check out websites and digital databases. Start with Find a Grave and Billion Graves. Those are two very large websites that record the burial places of millions of people in the U.S. and around the world. You can search these databases by name. The U.S. GenWeb Tombstone Project or the U.S. GenWeb Archives Project have a lot of lists from the early days of the internet or that have been transcribed from published records. You'll probably need to browse these lists to find your ancestor. Cemetery plot maps and various published burial record information is available in a number of places and formats from Ancestry.com to independent websites or local and state archives. The information provided in these records varies and may include much more information than what ends up on the headstone. Also check local funeral homes, especially in rural areas where there aren't as many options. Funeral homes often have a lot of information about local cemeteries, even ones that no longer exist. Local historical or genealogical societies are also a great source of information. 
They often have maps of local cemeteries and might be able to help you locate the overgrown and uncared for ones. In rural areas, go walk to cemeteries in the areas that your ancestors once lived. Focus on the religious burial grounds that your ancestor was affiliated with or in areas where you know that they lived based on census records. Once you know where your ancestor is buried, start researching that cemetery. If you don't already have the location information, a quick Google search can be great for this. You can often just type in the name of a cemetery, even the smaller ones. If it's a large cemetery with an office, give it a call and hopefully someone will help you to locate the exact burial location of your ancestor. Finally, let's talk about planning your trip to the cemetery. The type of cemetery that you're visiting is going to greatly impact how you plan. Visiting a large, well cared for, manicured cemetery is going to be a lot easier than visiting an abandoned cemetery that's only accessible via a logging road. So here are my tips for cemetery trips. Regardless of what type of cemetery you're visiting, dress for the outdoors. Prepare for either hot or cold, but I do recommend long pants and tennis shoes in case of ants, bees, mosquitoes, other pests. Bring your sunscreen, bug spray, and a hat. Have your camera ready. If you've got a fancy SLR, great. Otherwise, a cell phone will be fine. Bring a soft brush, water, and aluminum foil or a mirror. Don't try to clean a headstone with anything but a soft brush and clean water. You can easily damage headstones by using chemicals. If you have a hard to read stone that's been weathered, you can use a foil or mirror to reflect light onto the stone and create shadows and contrast. Similarly, wetting the stone can add contrast and make words easier to read. Bring a small spade and clippers. Make sure to be careful around the stone, but you can use these tools to dig up dirt and grass that has built up around the headstone. If you're in a cemetery maintained by a company or organization, let them know if you find any damaged or deteriorating stones. Hopefully this video has helped you understand the benefits of cemetery research, understand how to locate them, and giving you some good tips on how to visit and make the best of your research trip. Check back again next month for another edition of Vital Records, your monthly genealogy tip series.